If drugs were the answer, what was the question? September of this year, I'll celebrate 35 years clean. And yes, alcohol is a drug, so I am squeaky clean. And I remember my first job clean at 21 years old was at Foot Locker in Eastland Mall. And I'm from Detroit, so those of you who know, know it's Eastland. So needless to say, Foot Locker was off the hook all the time. Eastland was the second highest volume Foot Locker in the country, second only to Foot Locker at Northland. And at the time, I wanna say I had about five or six months clean. I don't know what I was thinking, but I told my boss that I was recovering drug addict. <laughs> and not long after that, some clothes came up missing from the layaway shelf, and I caught the blame from it. Y'all, y'all remember layaway? This is back when you can like put ten dollars on like a feeler tracksuit or some jingle boots, and uh, take forever to pay it off, but you didn't tell your friends you were in layaway because you was balling. Anyway, uh, <laughs> and stealing clothes was never my thing, even when I was using, much less in recovery. And he said, "I know you stole those clothes. I just can't prove it." And I was like. Really? It was like the first time I heard a, a white person call me the N-word. Now, it wasn't in person, it was at a distance, but whatever. I was like, what? Like, what What did you say? <laughs> like, like, what did you say? <laughs> he also told me something else, my boss, that I'll never forget in all seriousness. He said, I'll never promote you. He said, I'll never promote you. Now, I'm a manager training. Uh, I'm 21 years old, working 75, 80 hours a week. And if you're not going to promote me, like, why am I here? And why is this dude mad at me? Eventually, I traded in my referee shirt for a, shoot, a suit and tie. And I started working uh, business to business. And I guess I wasn't living up to my new boss's expectations either. And uh, he called me an empty suit. And that one cut deep. Now, why am I telling you guys this? Well, because when you feel like you're not enough, it's very easy for someone's opinion of you to become your reality, especially when you're young and it forms a belief system. Now, here's the thing. What they say or think about you does not have the power to do anything unless you give it the power. And why would you give them the power to define you unless you were unsure? Like, how do you see you? A friend of mine once said, the greatest crime is when a person steals from himself and not even realize anything is missing. Instead, we'll blame other people for taking it. See, when you learn who you are, but don't affirm who you are, you will lose who you are. Not in truth, but in your, in your experience, your relationships, and in your life. I had to become my own best friend. Now, Oftentimes, I wonder if these negative um, messages had any impact on me, like somehow providing motivation for my success. Uh, was I motivated out of spite? And, and yeah, sometimes, sometimes I, I wonder where these guys are and I'm going to roll, roll down on them in the AMG and be like, what's up, y'all? <laughs> so seriously, I don't know what those comments did to me or for me. I don't know if it put a chip on my shoulder or if it somehow reinforced the low self-esteem I had been carrying since I was a little boy. But Picasso was already at work. And by Picasso, I mean God, let's keep it 100. With humility came awareness that God was placing people in my orbit to usher me in the direction of my purpose. So while we're being ushered into our purpose, it's important to stay aware of ourselves because we're creatures of habit. And, uh, you know, like I need to discover the ways that I, that I sabotage myself or I sabotage my, my, my purpose. Otherwise, I'm going to live my life as a victim. Uh, and you hear people all the time, as soon as they open their mouth, you, they're complaining about something. It's everybody, everybody else's fault. It's them. It's that. All of that stuff. It's so easy to look at the splinter in a brother's eye than to see the plank in your own. Socrates once said, the unexamined life is not worth living. And I think for me, uh, in my self-examination, I realized that asking for help was a strength, not a weakness. And the universe is abundant. Ask and ye shall receive. Learn to be grateful for the evidence of the abundance that has already shown up in your life. I used to hate my cousin, Harold. I remember this because he drove a Range Rover. And, and I thought, damn, he drive a Range Rover. Then it dawned on me, damn, my cousin drive a Range Rover. That's my cousin. <laughs> evidence was all around me. People who wanted to guide me and show me how to nurture the spiritual connection within me. It was all around me. I just had to learn how to get out of the way and ask for help. Now think about it. Michael Jordan uh, had a coach. Tiger Woods had a coach. Uh, people who accomplish great things usually have a coach or a mentor. What makes you any different? Who are you? So here's what I know about you. And by you, I mean me. You are amazing and unique, but you are also powerful.
You have greatness within you, not because of what you are or what you've done, but because of whose you are. We all have the power to transcend the limitations of our past programming and break the chains and shackles that normalizes mediocrity. As a man thinketh, so is he. Imagine what your life would be like if you were free from the whispers of the past, where the voices that whisper, you're too old, uh, no longer hold dominion over what's possible for you. Yeah, it takes guts and it takes courage to walk out into the light because the greatest enemy you'll ever face will be yourself. And look, if I can do it, y'all can do it. So let's do it.